<laughs> What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and this is a little bit different. I decided today I wanted to do Tackle Tuesday live. So stay tuned and we'll jump into things. All right, so I usually film these ahead of time. That way I can get all the links and everything else together. It just takes a, it's a huge production after I film them. So, but this one, um, this is about 13 fishing baits and I'm sponsored by 13. So this is one of those things that I'm going to do for them. Uh, you guys know, I rarely ever do these uh, or do things where it's just solely my sponsor stuff. I like to mix them in the videos and things like that. But uh, this one's a little different. They got so much stuff. I make like five videos, but I'm going to try to get it all into one. So let me get over to the comments, get that thing rocking and rolling, let some people jump in. Um, I, how's the social distancing going? That's what I want to know. Are you guys staying home? Are you getting out and going fishing and staying away from people? Washing your hands, don't touch your face, all that other stuff. I don't think this is going to go away anytime soon. So that's something we're going to have to get used to. But uh, what's going on? I'm happy everybody's here. Um Luckily, right now, I'm able to go right down the road to my to my local lake and go fishing. Um, and they haven't closed it yet, so I'm still making videos. I've got one that I'm editing today, uh, one I'm sending to my editor so he can do. And then the one I'm editing today is going to launch tomorrow, and it's awesome. It's a great one. Uh, but anyway, so, um, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about all the new baits or the ones that I have. That's not all of them because 13 Fishing came out with a ton of baits at ICAST. But all the baits that I have that are new for 2020 for 13 Fishing. So I know a lot of you guys think or uh, there's a lot of guys out there that don't even know 13 has baits. And so um, I just want to kind of go through them. I'm going to give you my honest opinion about them. I'm not going to embellish crap. If I do, you guys light me up down in the comments. Um, but uh I just want to, I want to show them to you and show you what I like and what I don't like about them and that kind of stuff. So, um, but first of all, uh, I don't know what first of all is, but <laughs> I just want to get, kind of let more people jump in. We got people coming in pretty quick. Um, Outdoor Ology says he's been fishing 24 seven. I hope not, man. You got to sleep sometime. I know them gamers that I like to watch love to stay up all night, but mm -mm, I got to, I got to sleep. Um, but, uh, so why is it called 13? So 13 is a luck as an unlucky number for most of it. It's actually my lucky number. I was born on Friday the 13th and 13's always been my lucky number, but 13 fishing is a company that was, is out of Tampa, Florida. And their, their, um, their little catchphrase is make your own luck. And it, and that's something I've been saying for years and years and years, even before 13 came along is that you fishing is only a little bit of luck but a whole lot of knowledge and skill and so and i and i've lived by that forever so 13 came up and it says and it's just basically just a play on just make your own luck who cares if it's 13 13 is an unlucky number eh whatever but uh but yeah and it's just a great little company i've been with them for about five years now um i i've told them again and again they can fire me tomorrow and i'll be back to work the next day because they're a great company they make great products and they try to keep the prices down as far as they possibly can, which I really, really like. But anyway, um, let's start off. Hmm, I got so many baits around me right now. Let's start off with the hard baits. Um, the cliff banger. Now the cliff banger is their kind of their deep diving series. It comes in three sizes. I'm just going to show you one for right now. Um, this one is the 70. And let me get the, the focus was working a minute ago when I did all the testing. There we go. So this is their deep diver. It goes to 15 feet. And what I like about these are this is their 12 foot diver, the 70. So this is a 70 that goes 15 feet. And this is a 70 oops, that goes 12 feet. And let me get it to focus again. Get my hand behind it. There we go. So the same size, but they've got one that goes a little deeper than the other, which is nice because I really don't like those giant ones that go 15 feet, you know, 15, 16, 17 feet deep. These are a little bit smaller than those. Um, and it just gives you a smaller profile, small and, and a uh, and and the bass tend to hit it a little bit better. 
They could, these are premium crankbaits. Let me uh, make sure I say that. These are premium crankbaits. They run between $14, $15 on Tackle Warehouse. So they're, they're not like your dirt cheap ones, but they run really great out of the box. Um, uh, they run true to depth because I've tested them and tested them and tested them. They run, and, they, uh, and they catch fish. I haven't gotten into the deep diving crankbait time of the year yet. Uh, but I was able to test them when they were prototypes and they and they caught fish. But we'll see. We'll see this year. But those are the cliff bangers. It also comes in a 60, which is a smaller one that dives eight feet. This one I love. OK. And I just grabbed one color color. I think there's like 22 different colors of this on Tackle Warehouse, something like that. Um, oh, it's sitting right here in front of me. Twenty one colors. But uh, but this one, you can see the, the paint job. This one's just a, just a sweet little 12 foot diver, small. I'll, I'll show it compared to the, to the 70. Oops. Let's get them side by side. So you can see the difference in the sizes. Um, but again, true right out of the box, so on and so forth. Um, just a really good deep dive crankbait. Um, if you guys have any questions about these baits while I'm running through them, just pop it up on the, on the feed. I'll try to, I'll try to see them. Um, Let's see. And what I would pair them with. Good, good question, Alan. Or uh, uh, Caden. Caden asked that question. What I would pair a deep diving crankbait rod is the ones that dive deep, 12, 15, 20 plus. I like a long, medium, heavy, moderate action rod. So like seven, six to eight feet long. So you can throw it a mile. The further you can cast it, the longer it stays at its maximum depth. And you can cover a lot more water at the at your desired depth. So um, that's what I the except for the smaller one, the uh, the sixty. I would throw a sixty at uh, probably a medium moderate or a medium heavy mo uh, moderate that's a little bit shorter. But that's me being nitpicky. If you just want one rod to throw big build baits, a medium heavy moderate would be the one. Okay, um, real seven actually six six to one i used to throw a five three to one but i hated it i can handle the drag from these from these big baits but the reason i hated the five three to one which is your traditional uh, deep cranking reel is that it took so long to get a fish into the boat when they bit and the longer that fish is out on a crank on a deep diving crankbait or a big crankbait the more chance they have to throw it because they'll get up and they'll shake their heads out of the water, gain leverage with that bait and it's gone. So I want to be able to get them back there as fast as I possibly can, but still be able to, um, uh, to manage the bait and be able to reel that bait in as much drag as it is. So something like a six, three to one would be perfect. So, um, let's see, I'm just making sure there's no, uh, quarantine's going great. Uh, we're staying home. Uh, I've got to go to the store today, but I'm taking my hand sanitizer and uh, and not touching people. So, <laughs> but uh, but we try to stay home as much as we possibly can. I try to film every day out on the lake. So let's stay in the crankbait deal. I was almost grabbed a top water, but let's talk about the scamp. Okay, the scamp uh, comes in 19 colors on Tack Warehouse. It runs uh, 10.99 or 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 11.99. Okay. Again, amazing, beautiful paint job. I just grabbed the prettiest one they had uh, <laughs> that I had on the wall. But I want you to look at the bill. Okay, this is the bill on the scamp. It's it's actually molded carbon fiber is what it is. And I love the fact that they put the depth on the bill. It means I don't have to pull out the sharpie and write it on the bottom. So this one's a one to three foot diver. It's a square bill. It's got really good VMC. I think they're VMC hooks. Don't don't quote me on that one. It's got really good VMC hooks. Uh, so they're pretty sh sticky sharp. Yeah, I would replace them after a short time, but right out of the box, you really don't need to. Uh, they even the, the cheaper hooks that come on on uh, crankbaits these days are usually pretty good. But uh, the thing I like about it is it's a high floater or it's a fast floater is what I call it. You, you can you can let it dive down and if it bumps something, it'll come up and you kill it. It'll come up really fast into the bass's face or it just gets out of the cover really easy. So you're bringing it through cover, bringing it through a brush pile. It hits the brush pile, it deflects. You stop reeling and it comes up a little bit and then you start reeling again and it misses that stick. It's um, what I've liked about it was when I first tested these out, literally when I say prototypes, the ones I tested were glued, hand glued together um, uh, when they first started uh, working on them. 
And the one I ones I tested, I really got a really cool bite down in Florida. I it was the wrong time of the year to be throwing a square bill. I you know, it's one of those things where you're just like, man, I've got to force feed these fish. And they didn't want what I was throwing at them. They wanted worms. And I knew that. So instead of faking it, I was like, let me see if I can catch one. What a good challenge. So I started ripping it and killing it. And it would the 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 square bill would dive down and then it would pop up really fast and would dive down and pop up really fast. I started to slay them on this thing. But the reason for the molded uh, bill is a, a couple of things. It's if you look at it, compare it to other square bills. OK, look how thin it is. The thinner your bill, the faster it gets down to depth and the thinner. The, and, and but when you thin the bill out, it makes it really, really fragile and, and brittle and it'll break easy. But they did it with molded uh, carbon fiber. So it's even it's like even more durable than the plastic bills. So that's what I love about that one. And it comes in two sizes. It comes in the 60 and the 70. So big one, a little one. So a 1.5 and a 2.0 is basically what you're looking at. All right. So I don't know why I did that. Let me look for questions. Sorry. Uh, what new bait would I take to a pond in Florida? Uh, Arlen, I will show you that one in just a minute. And, uh, and I'll, I'm actually going to save that one to the end because it's one of my favorites. Um, let's see. Can you use a high speed reel? Yes, you can, Edwin. No problem. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Um, let's hear the rattles. Okay. So that's one thing I forgot to talk about the scamp. The scamp is really, really loud and you can hear it like you can the loudest rattle trap when it's in the water. I mean, super loud. So it's really good in muddy water, stained water and stuff like that. I would even throw this one in stained water just to see if I, it was just the sound that attracted them. Um, the, the deep diving crankbait's a little bit different, higher, a little higher pitched, not as loud. Um, but definitely. And I think, I think these have a weight transfer system. Hold on. Let me listen and see. Yeah. It sounds like it has, might have a little bit of a weight transfer transfer system. I know we were talking about it, but I don't know if they finalized it or not. Um, don't quote me on that one again. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Will the fake black rod come out because the gen two is on sale? Uh, will a new fake black rod? It, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it will. That's kind of what they do is they, they cycle through them. So um, let's see what pound tet line would you use with that? I know uh, most likely be floral, but what pound, what pound test? I start off at 12 pound for deep divers. And I might, if I wanted to go a little bit deeper, I might go to a 10 pound test, but uh, 12 pound is typically what I use. And then for the square bills, it's 15 to 17 maybe 20, but I, I don't like managing 20 with a crankbait. It just, it, it's just too stiff for me. So that's definitely what I would do. Um, does the color of the bill matter to fish? I haven't seen whether it does or doesn't. I, I really don't. I haven't noticed uh, and I haven't put anything side by side, but really I don't think it makes much of a difference. It's a reaction bait. It's not a, Oh, let me look at it and stare at it for about five minutes and then, okay, I'm going to bite it like they do a shaky head, uh, which is the video that's coming out tomorrow. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's see. Dang, doo -doo. Let me see. I saw one that I wanted to see, but I cannot, I, I'm totally can't find it. Huh? Okay. Um, all right. So on to the next one, cause I can't find the question I wanted to answer. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. The next one is, let's get into the lipless crankbaits. It's that time of the year, especially you guys from me, which is North Georgia and North are still catching them on lipless crankbaits. Um, they have what's called the Magic Man. And it is a loud, beautiful, well-built um, one knocker. Let me see if this one, it's all it is, it's just a one knocker. And I grabbed a, uh, what I call citrus shad. I don't know what color, color they call it, but. Uh, chartreuse of blue. They have several different colors. There's 19 colors in all, but um, this one is the three quarter ounce. This one is the half ounce. And uh, what I love about them is, is, you know, I, when I talk about lipless crankbaits, I have every brand I possibly can get in one box. 
because some of them you can yo-yo well. Some of them don't yo-yo well, you know, like ripping it off the bottom, letting it fall on a slack line. Some of them will spiral and get caught up in the line. So they're not so good at, at one, one way I want to fish and other baits are not so good at, at burning really, really fast. So you got to have different, different brands. So I'm not saying just go out and buy these, but these yo-yo incredibly well. And when they land, they land just like this on the bottom. So it's less likely for them to get hung up. So my favorite way to fish them is, and they, and they are written well too, or that you can burn them really, really well. So there's two different ways is jerk your rod up. Now you're using a medium fast action rod or a medium heavy moderate rod. The, the chatter crank rod is probably the best one for this, but you rip it up and let it fall down on a slack line, or you can let it fall on a tight line, which it'll cause it to pendulum away from the fish and the fish see it and they come up and they grab it. The other, uh, the other way you, I love to do it is it's called a burn and stop. And literally it's five or six cranks and kill it, five or six cranks and kill it. And I'm doing it as fast as I can. And I'm stopping for about a half a second. And if they're in the grass or you're fishing a grass flat, that's the, for me this time of the year, that's the best way to fish it they'll come out of that grass and they will inhale that bait. So that's what I would do. But the magic man is just, like I said, just a loud one knocker, beautiful, beautiful paint jobs and, and just a really good lipless crankbait. Like I said, but don't just settle on one type of crankbait that are lipless. Like I said, each of them had their own good and bad things. So uh, the original rattle trap is an amazing at just one speed, just cranking, and then let it die on, on a slack on a, on a tight line. But if you let that thing go slack, it's going to spin around and it's going to grab a hold of its line, but it's a, I've caught tons of fish on it. So the next one, my, one of my favorites and one I've been using for a while, and I know you guys have seen them in videos are their topwater frogs. Okay. These are the trash pandas. This is a pop inversion. Let me get my hand behind it. So it'll focus and it doesn't like me there we go so we got the trash panda that's the pop inversion and i almost stuck myself with the hooks and then we have the walking version so let me tell you a little bit about these because i had a lot of input when they were designing it um the bottom of it the first thing you notice is we got some heat shrink on the hook right here Okay, and that heat shrink does two things. Now, what I used to do is when I had like a, a, a any frog that leaked and that or that uh, that took it on water and it would sink fairly fast. What I would do is I would take braided line and I would wrap it around that hook like that so much that I could plug the hole and it would slow down the leaking. The other thing it would do is it would prevent these hooks from when a, you catch a big fish and you just have it on one hook. That big fish can literally separate pry apart these two hooks and destroy your bait, but also get off. So you'd wrap that braid around there to prevent that. Well, by putting a good heavy duty heat shrink on those hooks, they took care of that problem. I love my autofocus, but I don't have it set up to where I can do a manual focus. Okay. The other thing is if you flip it over on the other side, it's got a little hole right there. And what that hole does it's small enough not to let water in, but big enough to let air out. So when the fish bites, that, that frog collapses really, really easy. These hooks. Now, if you watched my frog video on how to modify a frog to where it catches more fish, you take a, a your, you know, most other frogs you take and you can take a pair of pliers and just bend those hook out, hooks out just a little bit. But these are already at that angle. You don't have to bend them out right out of the box. They're at the angle that I want. Um, they, they rest really nice and somewhat close to the, to the body, close enough to where it doesn't get snagged up as much, but far enough out where you can get a really good hook set. They thought of a lot of things with this thing. Now, the things I don't like about these, and it's kind of me being nitpicky, but this one doesn't come through the grass very well. It's a popping frog. Most popping frogs don't, but it gets caught up in the grass. So if you're fishing muck and, and, and pat, not muck. Well, pads too, but mainly uh, mats and things like that, like you would in October. Don't use a popping frog. Use the walking frog. Now, this popping frog walks really, really well for a popping frog. This one, it literally goes back and forth. You can go 180 degrees really easy. It, it walks really, really nice. 
Um, a lot of people ask now, where's the weight? You know, I, and you don't see a weight on the butt end of this. Oops, let me flip this one around. This one. All right. You don't see a weight on the butt end like you normally do on other frogs. The weight is on the hook inside the inside the body and it's low on the hook. And so it rests like this and not like this when you're in open water. Rest just like that on top. And that also helps with the ability to be able to bring it through stuff and be able to walk it a little bit easier. Just totally out of the way. And it's not back there where it can get in the way of a hook set. So pretty cool. All right. Let me catch up on some questions. Uh, that's a good one. Andre says, says, is it harder to fish a deep diver on a kayak? It is if you make your casts out in front of you. So let me put these up. If you make your cast directly in front of you and you start reeling, your boat's going to go towards that crankbait unless you're anchored down. So you got two options. You can anchor and, and be just fine. Sometimes you have to double anchor, which I, is just a pain in the butt. Uh, or you can turn 90 degrees in your boat. So your boat's facing this way and you're fishing that way. And the drag from your boat will slow down how fast you go towards where you're fishing. Those are the two options. It is a little bit more difficult, but use your boat to your advantage, not to your disadvantage, and you'll be just fine. Um, another thing is, is even if you're even if you're cranking at 90 degrees, if you have your rod off to the side cranking, then your boat's going to swing around just because of the angle of your rod. You can either point your rod straight at the bait or you can make one cast and hold your rod on this side and make your next cast and hold your rod over here. And it will keep your kayak staying somewhat straight. It'll keep it from turning. So uh, favorite line to throw on lipless crankbaits, uh, fluorocarbon, which would be uh, a Brazex because I love to fish lipless through junk and trash and drag it on the bottom but Seaguar, Brazex, and 15 to 17 pound test. <coughs> All right. This pollen is absolutely killing the back of my throat right now. Uh, and no, it's not coronavirus. Uh, are any of you, are any of their reels or rods saltwater ready? Yes, a lot of them are. Uh, and they say it on their website. Um, the, the, their reel designer is a saltwater inshore fishing freak. And so um, I know that the, the, the TCs, I think, anyway, go check their website. I can, I can guess all day long, but he loves inshore stuff. So um, Tyler, thanks for the 20 bucks, man. And, and Jack, Jackalack. <laughs> hey, what are the best baits for pre-spawn lures and ponds? Um, I've got a video about that. It's a tackle Tuesday uh, from just several weeks ago. You can go back and watch that one and it covers the five of them. Do you prefer popping or walking frogs? Thanks for all the great tips and awesome videos. Uh, go buy you a chartreuse jack camera on me. Ha <laughs> ha, dude, I probably will. <laughs> so um, I prefer a popping frog because I don't fish frogs around heavy, really, really thick, heavy mats, but only a few months out of the year. And I love to get more. The more action and the more noise I can make, the better. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention about these frogs is, yes, you can trim the legs, but these they walk so well, you really don't have to trim the leg, legs to make them walk better. But if you get a fish that's coming up behind and just grabbing the legs, if you get a lot of short strikes, that's when you want to cut those those legs and make them shorter and shorter until you can get them to bite. I have some that literally the legs are less than an inch long. And uh, I had to do it because the fish were short striking so much one day. Um, let's see. Um What's the lightest bait caster they have? The lightest one they have is the, the boss, the new boss that's out. And I have two or three cranking reels from that and, and two of their uh, eight one-to-one -one gear ratio reels. And they are super light. And I, I don't know. They sent them to me to try out. It's one of those things where it's one. Of, it's like they're more than what I would. They cost a lot. They're 500 bucks, I think, or four or something. Don't quote me. Matter of fact, hold on. They're right here. Let me look at them. Um... The boss reels are, nope, there they are. Yep, $400. So, but you get what you pay for. That's why they're so light. All right, so, um, doo -doo -doo. all right, so next one. Let's get in. Actually, no, I'm going to do that one from Florida. The Florida bait somebody asked about, but this is something that I've started to use just recently. 
And this is called the motorboat. It's one of those oddball baits that 13 came out with. You're like, what in the crud is that? Um, but let me show it to you. Let me get my hand in there so it'll focus. Come on. All right. So it's like a fluke style bait. And this is how it comes. It comes with a hook in it. And look at what's on the end. This is actually a plastic buzz bait trailer. So hold on a second. Let me uh, let me find something. Uh, all right. So a plastic buzz bait trailer. And what this does is this is actually a different kind of plastic. You don't want to store these in with other soft plastics because they'll get really, really messed up. Uh, just because it, it's it's a very tough, it's got a lot of hardener in it and stuff like that. Um, but let me explain to you how it's designed. So you've got the hook right here, and then molded inside of this bait is a piece of mylar. Uh, I think it's mylar, but anyway, it's a piece of, of heavy duty thread that's hooked around the hook on a split ring. And then it comes back to the spinner. So this thing cannot be pulled out. What it does is you've got a bait that can go through trash that has a buzz bait trailer and the buzz bait or the um, buzz bait tail and the tail is plastic and it floats. This is unreal around spawning fish. I was wrecking them uh, about a week and a half ago on this thing when they first moved up to spawn and the males were really, really protective. Um, and so it was a really, really good um uh, really good topwater bait, but you, and, but the way you throw it and it's kind of light. So I throw it on a medium, heavy spinning rod, uh, 12 pound test fluorocarbon, 10 pound you can get away with. Um, and, and it's like a topwater, they come up and they hit it and you got to count one, two, three, but when you set the hook, don't set it too hard, just kind of lean into them and you'll catch them. It is really, really cool. It's just a new bait and a, a new style of bait. And I just love to catch fish on something that's as new and strange as that thing. But the motorboat is, I, I, I can't wait till the bed, the, till they start bedding right here down the road from my house and bedding hard. And I think that thing was just going to absolutely drive bass crazy, just floating right over top of their, their bed, just sitting there. And they're just going to look up at it and get mad and, and annihilate it. So anyway, that's the motorboat. All right, let me get caught up on some questions. Um... Let's see. <laughs> Big Red says they need a fluke style bait that's called My Name is Gene. <laughs> we have talked about that, but I don't think they're going to name it after me. I don't want a bait named after me. Um, all right. Good Badger Spinner Rod is 184 people watching. That's so cool. If you guys are new here, be sure you subscribe. Uh, I'm going to change the banners up just a little bit. There we go. Get back into the comments. Uh, Let's see. So, uh, AJ, what do you want me to break down? Because I was running 100 miles a minute. Just let me know. Uh, okay, so soft plastics. This is what I've been fishing the most because this is the time of the year where I fish the crap out of soft plastics. The first one, except for this one, <laughs> this one is next month when they start move out, when they move out a little bit deeper and they get on the offshore stuff. But this one is called, where's it at? There we go. The Big Squirm. Okay. And it's a ribbon tail, but it's a big 10 inch ribbon tail. All right. And it's got, let me see if I can get this thing focused. I know my lighting absolutely is horrid, but I have to do this in order for you guys to see the baits. So what it is, is it's got a tail. It's got a little bit of a flange, but not much of one, but it's got a really big hook. And I love ribbon tails in uh, May, June, July, August, September. And around here, September is still really, really hot. So it's my summertime bait. 10 inches long, Texas rig it, drag it through offshore cover and off drops and stuff like that. A ribbon tail, a big ribbon tail really, really shines in those hotter, hotter, hotter times of the year. Um, but like I said, it's called the big squirm. The next one, when I first saw this, when they were, when they had it in a, basically they had it on AutoCAD. When they first drew this one up, they sent me a, a picture of it and I loved it. Because the first thing I saw, and I'm going to hold it up. The first thing I saw were these two little 
rabbit ear tails that they call them. And I'm going to get these a little closer, let you look at the tails. So they are, they've got a little bit of a flange to them on both sides and they kick really, really tight. Come on, focus back on my face, you stinking camera. There we go. They kick really tight. But when I first saw this thing and this one is, uh, holy cow, this was called the joystick. I forgot to tell you, but this one, um, it's a swimming worm to me. Okay, it's really good on a shaky head. It's really good on Texas rig, but it's one of those things where I put an eighth ounce weight on there down in Florida and around heavy cover everywhere. And I throw it out and I just slowly swim it back. Um, and I love fishing a swimming worm because he just catches fish. And it and it's one of those things that is just a subtle little deal when they just when they want to chase, but they don't want to commit to something that's really loud, especially in the grass and that kind of stuff. The joystick is at, I mean, I was really excited. I've already caught a ton of fish on them. Um, and it's just a great little thing. Now, this one is probably my favorite one when it comes to the name. This one, I'm going to show you the package. I know the glare is horrible off these packages, so I'm not going to show them for long. This is just their, their seven inch finesse worm, but they call it the BFF, the blunt force finesse. So when I was at Logan Martin three weeks ago, fishing the tournament where it just rained and rained and rained and everything flooded, I knew that my pattern was gone uh the creek brook came up three feet while i was fishing and my fish came out of the creek channel and went to the flats and scattered so i grabbed a shaky head and put one of these things on on a shaky head and that's how i caught my limit and was able to qualify for the for the championship but this is a little bit different um than like a zoom trick worm and a, and a finesse worm what i normally would throw on a shaky head first of all it's a little bit fatter but it's not as fat as a magnum trick worm or magnum finesse worm. So it's kind of in that middle range. It's, it's not as skinny as the, the, uh, as the trick worm and the finesse worm now. And it's got a little bit different consistency of plastic that floats a little bit better. Now, I don't think it has much salt. It doesn't have hardly any salt. Look, I put it in my mouth. Sorry. Blech. But, uh, it doesn't have hardly any salt, so it's really, really buoyant, and it's perfect for a shaky head. I caught that 20, I think it was a 21-inch that, that sealed out my limit with it. And then yesterday, while I was fishing and filming my shaky head video, it comes out tomorrow, um, I couldn't keep them off of it. And, and I wasn't doing much. I was just shaking on slack line like you're supposed to with a shaky head anyway. But I've been really impressed with that one for being just a plain Jane-looking worm. They really thought about what consistency you want the soft plastics in order to do what they need to do. And this is, next one is a prime example of that. It's called the jerk. Okay. This is their fluke style bait. And of course, I, you can't see it in the package because of the glare. It's got those same rabbit ear. And I, we won't be able to see it because of the white. But same rabbit ear tails as the joystick. But it's got a fluke style body. Okay. Now, when you jerk this one, it does not jerk back and forth like a normal fluke. When you jerk it and use it as a jerk, a soft jerk bait, it goes up and then it glides back down and that tail kicks. It's a very subtle action. It's not a, a, a really aggressive one like a lot of times I like to fish. So it comes up and it falls back down. But it's really tough plastic. They do bite it. It looks like a dying bait fish. You don't see a di dying bait fish doing this all the time. You see a dying bait fish go up and they fall back down real slow. And they go up and they fall back down real slow. And that's one of those actions that just absolutely the fish love. Um, what surprised me was when I was down in Florida. Now my normal trailer for a chatterbait is a, a, uh, a rage swimmer, a, a strike King rage swimmer. And I ran out of them completely cause I was wrecking them on a chatterbait. And I'm like, man, what am I going to do? I didn't have any super glue. I didn't have a lighter to melt the plastic to try to put them back together. I just, they just got destroyed. And so I pulled open a bag of jerks and I threw a jerk on there and they hit it like crazy and it was a different, it, the bite just changed. It was, they took it and wanted to kill it and I'd catch them and they'd be, the bait would be all the way in the back of their throats, which means they really want it. And it did make a difference that day. And I think it's just a better, it, it still has action. That blade doesn't kill the action of this tail because it's just a subtle action and it gets enough water across it on a chatter bait to be able to still have action. And when you use a paddle tail like a uh, any paddle tail, really, that blade from the chatterbait will steal the water 
from the the tail of the of the swim bait and the tail will just kind of hang there and do this so i think that really was a huge difference uh are floating good worms good for bed fishing if so what colors techniques i filmed a video about that yesterday uh, my favorite colors for floating worms are methylate and bubble gum and white are the ones I throw when I'm around bedding fish or when I'm just covering shallow water. But that one will be back out probably either later this week or early next week. So, um, let's see. Stetson, I'll get to your your uh, question here in just a minute. I'm, we're going to talk about baits for a little bit more. Um, <laughs> that looks like a big bass worm. Yep. Uh, would, would plastic 13 baits melt in JJ's magic? No, I, the only one I think that might is the motorboat and I haven't tested it yet just cause it's, it's not a last tech. It's just a different kind of plastic. It almost seems like it's so tough. I bet you this will last through, you know, 15, 20 fish. It's so tough, but that's the only one I worry about. The other ones, no, they, they're fine in JJ's magic. Um, Let's see. Favorite shoal bass bait is a swim bait, a paddle tail swim bait, or a big, uh, or a bull shad, about a six inch bull shad. All right. So let's see. I think I've got three more or two more soft plastics. This next one is the Ninja Craw. And I'm not even going to hold that up there because it's just going to be glare. But the Ninja Craw, this is their, and this is what I like to call a big fish bait. I wish I could figure out how to get that off of there without having to go back and find the comments. There we go. Um, so this is their big, I call it a big bass bait, but it's just got a lot of, a lot of action to that tail. If you look at the, the claws, if I can get it to focus again, let me get my butt out of the way, get my directions right. Come on. There we go. Huh, I suck. <laughs> anyway, if you look at the claws, they've got these little flanges on them and they are really, they have a lot of action. This is a great jig trailer for the summertime. This is a really good bed fishing bait to put this on a stand up shaky head, something like a, a Buckeye lures spot remover, but the Magnum one that's got the big heavy hook. Um, and this, I, this has got enough action to ja just absolutely tick them off. But I'm, I use it as a jig trailer and it's really, it's a good jig trail. It's got a little bit stiffer plastic, uh, which would make it last longer on a jig. It's not really, really soft and it looks like a crawfish. I mean, it's just got a lot of action to it. So that's a really good one. And that Ninja tail, I mean, it chops like crazy when you're going through it, but you don't want to use that as a trailer in the winter time or in the cold water months. Uh, I like to use something that's got a lot less action. I would actually use something like this next one, which is called an invader. But that's not what this was designed for. So let me show you. This is the invader. Why is my focus all jacked up? Doesn't like me today. All right. So what this is, I'm going to flip around so you can see the head. This is their flipping bait. This is a beaver style without the, the little gap that's in the center. And it's got the same little rabbit ear tails. So it's got a subtle action. It's real pointed. So it comes through the cover really good, yet it's got a spot that's perfect for, you know, a three eighths all the way up to a one and a half ounce uh, uh, sinker lead or tungsten sinker to be able to punch through and flip into heavy cover. What I like about it is unlike other beaver style baits that have that gap right there, you know, they always have those two concave gaps that are on either side of the, of the bait. What happens is it tears up really easy. Those beaver style baits that have that, there's not enough plastic there to put a hook in and be able to flip for a half hour with that, or 40, 45 minutes to an hour with that bait without the hook working itself through as it's, as it's going through the heavy cover. And you end up tearing up a bait without even catching a fish. This one, because they don't have that gap, has a lot more meat to it in the center and those hooks uh, don't penetrate it quite as bad. So you can fish it for 45 minutes to an hour without getting a bite. They have, welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> but it won't tear up the bait. They're very skinny and they go through the, the, uh, the thick cover really easy. And there's not a lot of appendages off the side to get snagged as they're going in, in through the thick grass and the mats. This, the little claws that are right here, whatever they call them, they, they 
tuck away underneath there as it slides through the mats and it goes through really easy. Great flip and bait. That is the invader. And I'm excited about this one, especially in the fall when they start to get up under the mats. Uh, I caught a bunch on them last year. Uh, they're going to be good pretty much whenever the bass get into thick cover and get into heavy cover. Um, and that's the ones that I have, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Let's do about a 15 minute Q&A. And, &A, and uh, then I'm going to go uh, buy, go to the store and go get some stuff for my kids. So do they make a Cinco? No, they don't. Um, Oh, and by the way, all of this stuff, the link down in the description is to the Tackle Warehouse deal. It's my affiliate link. So I get a percentage of whatever you buy, uh, you know, whatever you spend over there. Um, and it really does help the channel. And uh, but anyway, so just click on that link, go over there to see all the 13 fishing stuff. Uh, OK, let's get caught up. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Um, Let's see. Thoughts on mud bug crawl. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, oh, wait. maybe I ought to start in the middle because it keeps popping. Gene, I caught a double digit barn owl yesterday on a spook. Uh, have you ever snagged a bird while fishing and what did you do about it? And yes, I got my spook back. Good, man. Oh, I've caught um, I caught a green heron once on a shaky head lizard. I caught a goose on a lipless crankbait. It ran in front of it. It flew in front of my, my lipless as I was casting. I wasn't aiming for it. Um, and that's it. I'm surprised I haven't caught a loon because I love to fish around loons. And I'm, I'm always scared that one of them's going to grab my bait. But and I got my baits back. I did. Uh, I've saved the life of a of a uh, of a gull once a seagull that had line all wrapped around it. But that's about it. So uh what's my number one bait for pre-spawn a chatterbait um let's see i put rage tails upside down on chatterbaits and the blade doesn't mess with the tail action at all then it must be a larger one i like the little three and three quarter inch ones because the, even the short ones, no matter which direction I face them, it seems that they just kind of hang. If I do it upside down, they literally hang even more and there's hardly any tail kick to them. But it's maybe just because I'm fishing the smaller ones. So um, are the boat ramps in Georgia close? Some of them are, um, but a lot of them are not. I think Georgia's going around closing like the bathrooms and uh, the common areas and things like that. I think they're leaving the boat ramp open because nobody really comes in contact with each other on the boat ramps. I wish at my little public fishing area down the road, they would put signs up on the dock, on the boat dock that say no fishing. So there weren't people standing on the boat dock fishing because they're not supposed to be. That's for getting on and off of your boat. But maybe I'll have to talk to my friend, uh, the game warden and see if they'll do that. Cause that really is it. it I don't, because of I, what I understand about infectious diseases, I really don't like to get around anybody. And so you have three or four people lining a boat dock and you're going within a foot and a half of them trying to get to your boat. So, and there's like yards and yards of bank access. They don't have to be on the boat dock. Um, do they make crankbaits and jerks? Shout, shout me out, Harvey. Uh, Harvey, yes, they do. Uh, they make a jerk bait. I did not bring one in just because I only throw jerk baits in the wintertime and they're really pretty jerk baits. And I really, I don't know why I didn't grab them, <laughs> but uh, I didn't. So, but they make jerk baits. Uh, they make, um, and those are all the crank baits that they have that I have anyway. I didn't, I don't have every single bait that they make. And if you go on tackle warehouse and look, you'll see that I missed a whole bunch of them, but the loco special is what their jerk baits called. Uh, they have little paddle tail swim baits. They have, uh, a bunch of different stuff, drop shot baits and things like that. Those are the ones that I didn't show you. So uh, frog price, I just saw it and I just skipped off of it. The frog price is 13 bucks for the frog. So, and that's just because of all the stuff that goes into making it. There's a lot of extra steps that they have to do to make them. So, and they're really good. I mean, they're, they're, I love them. They're really good. But there's a time and place for the other frogs as well. So what other chatter bait do you like besides a jackhammer? Um, the jackhammer is really good unless I'm fishing grass. If I'm fishing grass, I don't like the jackhammer. Um, I, that's like submerged grass, like milfoil. And then, and then I go with something that's got more of a pointed head. They're, uh, oh, what's it called? The 
Z Man. Um, gosh, Almighty. Hold on, let me look it up. My brain just went mad, went blank. Uh, the Project Z Chatterbait from Z Man is the one that I like to fish in the grass. So those are the two my two favorites. I don't have any other ones. I don't see any reason to have any more. They're all those are all pretty good. Uh, what are your favorite patterns like? What are you looking for when you scan through a lake this time of year? Uh, what are your top five baits this time of year besides chatterbait and uh, trick worm, etc.? My what I look for. And it all depends on water clarity as, as to what I'm fishing and how I'm fishing it. Um, so like yesterday, the water's a little bit stained and the, there are some bass spawning shallow. I mean, dirt shallow. And I saw a 10 pounder spawning dirt shallow and I couldn't get her to commit because she hadn't been, they hadn't locked on the bed yet. Um, but what I like to do is I like to fish just out of sight. So I, I took a shaky head and I threw it along the bank and I paralleled the bank and the shaky head was actually red bug and it had a little bit of glitter. It was sunny and I always like to use shiny glitter when it's sunny and uh, I fish just off the uh, off of that depth. And I always, if it's really muddy, I'm fishing super shallow, but I like to fish when the bass want to get shallow, like to spawn and stuff like that. I like to fish to where the bait is just out of sight. And I tend to get more bites that way, especially this time of the year. Any other time of the year, you go deep, go way deep or go way shallow or whatever. But when they're spawning, I like to be right out of sight. And that's when I got the most bites yesterday. So the poster behind you is killing my OCD. Yeah, that's actually a, a piece of plywood. And I do that to pick to pick on my OCD friends. So thank you. <laughs> but yeah, but a fan of mine painted that on a piece of plywood and it's just awesome. So, um, uh, new to fishing, please help me. I have 770 some odd videos that dude, if you just sit down and start watching them, you're going to learn how to fish. A lot of people have done it over the years. So, uh, so I'm new to using a bait caster. I've been practicing in the backyard and I feel I'm ready to go out on the water. What lures do you recommend for a first timer using a bait caster on the water? A spinner bait and a Texas rig, something that you can throw and, and make it about a three eighths ounce weight that you put on that Texas rig. You don't want it too light because that'll mess you up and that kind of stuff, but about a three eighths ounce tex a weight on the Texas rig, drag that around, flip it into heavy cover, but the spinner bait is something you can cover water with. So uh, go watch that video about a beginner's tackle box or the tackle that you need to be for a beginner. I can't remember what I, remember what I, titled, I titled it, but that one lists exactly what I'd be throwing. So. What 13 reel do you think is the best overall and what rod would you per, would you pair that reel with? What 13 reel do I think is the best overall? Um, I love the Concept A. It's my favorite. I wouldn't call it the best. Uh, if you're looking for the best, their E was a really good one, the Concept E. The Boss is unreal. Uh, I love it. I, I'm not a fan of the handles. Cause I I've gotten so used to the fat uh, 13 fishing handles. Cause I've got big fingers and big hands. Um, but it is, it's light. It's fun to throw and everything else. So um, let's see. Where's the one I was going to come back to good budget spinning rod and reel. Let me think. Um, I'm going to go back and look at 13 fishing stuff because I'm not all up on their stuff. That's lower priced. I have used like the, 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 uh, the source X and the source K I've used, and that's their lower end spinning reels. Um, and they're made of metal, dude. They're not like plastic, like you would get from Walmart. Um, but the, the, the X is $40 and the Cree or are they calling it the Creed K? Okay. The source X is $30 is $40. And I guess they're calling it the Creed K. I thought it was a source K, but the Creed K is $50. Either one of those are a great spinning reel. Uh, get them in about a, get them in a 2000 or a 3000 size or a 2.0 or 3.0 as they, as they say a 13. Um, really good, really good reels. Um, the rod itself, I like to stay in the 60 to $80 range with a rod. If you, and, and that goes across the board. 
usually you get a pretty decent rod. And the reason I'm still with 13 after five years is because their rods always feel like the next price point up. So an $80 rod feels like a hundred dollar rod. And so, um, and, and their hundred dollar rods feel like a $120 rod. That's what I'm kind of kind of trying to get at is that's why I love 13 is because their stuff feels better than it, than their price point. So, all right. I hope that helped. If not, let me know. Call me bad names. <laughs> uh, what size spinning reel do I use? Most of the time I use a 2000 or a 2.0 unless it's a really, really lightweight reel. My deal is, is I don't like a reel that's too heavy in my hand. I, I do a lot of just standing there shaking a rod. I do a lot of drop shot and I do a lot and it just, the ergonomics of it just, just, just hurt my wrist and hurt my, especially now you'll see in the video tomorrow. I've got real bad tendonitis in my right arm right now. So I literally will set the hook and drop the rod because I can't hold on to it. But a light, lightweight reel. So if it's like a higher end reel, like this, like the, uh, the prototype X, which is like a $160 reel or something like that. Let me make sure I'm telling you the right thing. I hate to lie to you. $160 on sale at Clat Attack Warehouse right now. Normally a $200 reel. It's super, super light. So I can get a 3000, but the heavy ones, I like a 2.0. And that's just my opinion. That's the way I like it. Um, all right, we're going to do this just for a couple more minutes. Uh, what scenario do you believe a rattle trap is of most use? Um, lakes with grass. I don't know why a rattle trap works best in lakes with grass. Whether you're fishing the grass or not, I don't know why it is that a rattle trap seems to work better on grassy lakes. Um, but early in the spring, all the way up to spawn and then during spawn they don't it doesn't usually work really well and then post spawn for a, a few weeks and then when they get out on the on those points and offshore in the post spawn time they work really good when those fish are schooling up on on bait fish they'll sit out on a point and wait for a school of bait fish to come by and come up and eat you know chase the bait fish and when they're chasing a uh, lipless seems to work really good but the best time my favorite time is early in the spring and then again in the fall they're really good to run along at the edges of grass lines and stuff like that. They seem to start picking up, but I go to chrome colors. Let me get back to colors. In the spring, I do reds and oranges and yellows. In the fall, I go chrome blue, chrome black, and that's it. I only use chrome colors because they really are keying in on shad and other shiny bait fish during the fall. So, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Trey, I'm going to give you my video I shot yesterday. Oh my goodness. Uh, another question when fishing a trick or weightless, do you use mono or fluoro? I use fluoro because I want, I still, it's a, it's a floating worm. They call it a floating worm, but I want it to sink. I want it to sink slowly. So I use a really light hook and I use fluorocarbon line and a sinker or a swivel up in front of it, like eight, 12 to 18 inches up in front of it to cause that, that worm to float or to sink just a little bit. And that video, like I said, will be out either end of this week or early next week. Um, do you consider 13 reels better than quantum smokes? I've never used a quantum smoke, so I don't know. Um, reel speeds fast to slow. Do you do not understand the numbers? Richard, there's a video that I made about four years ago on, and it's a great video that explains uh, the, uh, the gear ratios of reels. If you go on my main channel page, hit the little uh, magnifying glass to do a search just on my page and search for gear ratio and you'll be able to find that video. And it's a really good one. Um, I sat down and got into the nitty gritty of, of speeds of the reels. To put it in a nutshell, uh, anything that I'm dragging on the bottom that I'm going to want to reel back to me real fast and make another catch, I'm throwing eight one to one. Seven three to one is the best all around one. Uh, cause you can go fast and you can slow down and for deep diving crankbaits and baits that I just have to force myself to fish low, I throw a six, three to one. Uh, the seven, three is really good for like, um, moving baits. Seven, three to one is for moving baits. So it's really, really good. Uh, I'm live right now, Jake. Um, oh, you need your, yep. he's going to go play games. He's got to get his headset. All right. Um, Sean Lay, thanks for the 20 bucks, man. You're freaking awesome. I really do appreciate it. Uh, 
Hope you're doing well. What situation do you use spinnerbait versus chatterbait? I have no luck on chatterbait, but try to use it as much as possible. I use a chatterbait. Now, with a chatterbait, you want to bump as much as you can, but you want to stay away from bushes because a chatterbait gets hung in the bushes. And that's when I'll throw a spinnerbait because a spinnerbait will not get hung in the bushes or not as easily. So, but with a chatterbait, I find it's easier. It's better to fish that thing super slow. And if you can't slow down, get a 6 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. That's what I've had to do. But anyway, and you're going to want to stay real close to the bottom and just barely feel that blade moving on the end of your rod and you'll find you'll catch more fish that way. Um, why did 13 get rid of the Comset Z? I have no clue, Harvey. Thanks for the two bucks, by the way. Um, I've heard things from like retailers and stuff like that, but I haven't um, I haven't sat down and asked 13 yet. And I mean to, but I just never get a chance. So uh is it worth upgrading from the normal plano boxes to the new edge boxes in some cases yes uh and for me personally it has to do with size now i don't have a whole i have one plano edge box and it's my now my terminal tackle box for my kayak um and i love it the terminal tackle no matter how small it is does not skip from one one uh section to another and i love it and i can't wait to try out all the new you know the new ones but some of them just seem to me, looking at them, they're just too bag, big for what I do. I love their spinnerbait box, but it's big. But the spinnerbaits fit in it really well. They don't get tangled. You can pull them out and put them in without any problem. They don't get bent up. It's amazing for spinnerbaits. I just don't know if it'll work for the way I store my tackle. We'll see. I'm going to try them out. I'll let you guys know. Uh, but the ones that hold like the lipless crankbaits and the chatterbaits, they got a chatterbait box now absolutely sick um so just give me some time to get a hold of them and, and really test them out before i give you my opinion on them uh what makes of walking bait and color and what makes of lipless and color uh and last one to ask is what square bills making color for summertime um walking baits for summertime the one i have the most confidence in is just your standard. And I love these because they're super loud. Uh, this isn't the color that I would use in the summertime unless I had just a little bit of, unless it was cloudy. Cloudy, I would use this color because you can't see through it. But on sunny days and on in clear water, I'm going to find the clearest one that I can get. And they have one that's a little bit clearer than this. Um, and I'm going to try to get them to make one that's 100% clear. But uh just a standard walking bait. This one I like because of the way it's weighted. It's got a tungsten weight in the head and you're able to really, really walk it good. You can make it go under boat docks for the most part. What you do is you get one big walk to the left. If you're on the right side of the boat dock, you want to go under the boat dock to the left, one big walk to the left and then a short walk to the right. And you can actually literally make this thing glide up underneath a boat dock around the, along the edge of it. But and you can turn it and do all kinds of other stuff, but it's really, really easy to walk and it's loud. Um, and that is, uh, that's the dual pitch from 13. Now, uh, the Super Spook Junior is one I've used for years. I, I, I have like 10 clear ones that I always, that, that are on, in the cases, laying as, uh, hanging on the peg, and I have a bunch in the box. And I put a red hook on the front to give the bass a target, and I have caught thousands of fish on a clear Super Spook Junior. For a lipless crankbait, pre-spawn red, post-spawn uh, chrome and black or chrome and blue. And if it's muddy water, I'm going to go with a chartreuse one, uh, chartreuse with black back. Um, and then square bills, my favorite ones are, and I, I don't have that color, but I have the color in a lipless. My favorite color square bills are this color right here which is a citrus shad, blue back, short, kind of a light chartreuse belly. And then I like um, a something like a sexy shad color. Those are my two favorites. So, um, all right, well, last question. And we're going, I'm going to go to the store and risk my life. Um, <laughs> the, let's see. Z is now Z3 for what I'm seeing. No, Z is... Um, I, if I had to guess, knowing what 13 does, Z, the concept Z is being phased out because they have another one coming out that's the same price point, <clears throat> but has better components. 
Now, the Z3 is a swim bait reel, a big, heavy swim bait reel. It's a 300 series reel, so it's got a wide spool, deep spool, and it can handle that 25-pound uh, fluorocarbon or that 30-pound fluorocarbon that you're going to put on it and still have enough, you know, be able to hold that, that amount of line. So the Z3 and the A3 are both big swim bait reels is what it is, and they are $280. So that's the difference between them. Um, uh, thanks for the one bucks. Uh, I don't even know how to say your name, but appreciate it, man. Thanks for the dollar. Um, and last but not least, my flipping weight size. Now, my favorite flipping weight size is uh, for punching. I start with one and a quarter for just flipping around cover three eighths to a half ounce. That's it. I mean, that's what I keep the most of is three eighths half ounce. And then when I'm punching, it's, it's one and a quarter, unless I can't get that one to go through. And then I'm going to go up to a one and a half and one and three quarters and then a two. So, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off of here. I really appreciate it. This will not be a normal thing to have tackle Tuesday live. It's been a lot of fun, but I just, uh, it's because I don't have time today to, to sit down and film it and then jump on and, and do all the editing and everything else that I have to. I just got to get it done. So I appreciate you joining me. I really thanks for thanks for all those who, who uh, donated through Super Chat. It really does help the cause. Uh, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.